Hello and welcome to Skein and Knits. My name is Ellie and I am a Norwegian living and knitting in London. You can find me on Instagram as Skeinder and I'm Skein and Knits as a designer on Ravelry and I also have the Ravelry group Skein and Knits. Anyway, this is a bit of an unusual video. I am going to make a long requested, long awaited video, which is my knitting needle review. Now, before I get into reviewing all these knitting needles, I have a couple of disclaimers. First and foremost, it's just knitting needles. All knitting needles ultimately do the job. This whole video is largely just a preference thing. I'm just going to be talking about my personal subjective opinions and experiences with a limited set of needles that I have been using for the past decade. So it's not going to be a comprehensive knitting needle review. And you may feel the complete opposite to me and that's fine. At the end of the day, knitting needles are knitting needles. So the pointy, they, they knit. <laughs> like a lot of these things just come down to habit. And the main thing I focus on when I consider whether a needle is good or bad is that you don't want a knitting needle to work against you. You just kind of want it to be, you know, letting you be part of the flow of knitting, so to speak. Another disclaimer is that I am mostly going to be talking about metal needles or steel needles, if you will, because that is my preference. If you prefer other materials, then uh, this may or may not be the video for you. I will be touching upon some birch wood needles, but again, that's just because I have been using some of those over the past decade. Uh, but primarily I use metal needles, so I will be mostly reviewing metal needles. I've pretty much never worked consistently with bamboo needles because bamboo needles are often quite grippy, which is good if you are a loose knitter because it will kind of hold on to your yarn better when you have looser stitches than the needles. And I am a relatively tight knitter, so that is the reason why. Thirdly is that I only use circular knitting needles, whether they are fixed or interchangeable. So that is also going to be the only thing I focus on on this review because I haven't really been using much else the past decade. Fourth, like I said, is that I will only be covering the set of needles that I've been using for the past decade, or at least used often enough to have something to say about them, not something that I've tried out here and there. Hence why you also won't find me talk much about straight needles and double pointed needles and trio needles and stuff like that. Fifth, and I can't believe I have to say this, but this is a needle review. So if you do not like negative opinions or negative opinions about your favorite needles, then maybe don't watch reviews. <laughs> I'm not just going to be gushing. I am going to be saying what well, I have honestly experienced with these needles. And I know some of these needles are going to be people's favorites. And if we can all take that with just a bit of a, it's just knitting needles, that would be lovely. If not, maybe just watch something else. Sixth and final disclaimer is that some of these needles I have bought with my own dear money and some I have been given by the companies or by shops that stock their needles for review or just for gifts or for me to talk about or whatever reason. So if you feel like that is a conflict of interest, I would reassure you that it's not. But even if you feel that way, I will be mentioning when I have been given the needles versus when I have bought them. I will be covering primarily seven brands-ish of knitting needles today and I have tried to group them into sort of three price categories. It's possible that these prices will have changed by the time you watch this video or even by the time this video is out because I did the research for this video a while back so these things always change and the other thing is that this is the price range of the selected needles I will be focusing on. So there will be cheaper needles, there will be more expensive needles. I've just made three categories that fit the needles we're looking at. So what I say is the cheapest group of the three, uh, you may still think that's expensive. What I say is the more expensive group of the three, you may still think that's affordable compared to something else. It's relative. The first brand I will be talking about is Addy, also sometimes known as Sunnes or PT or Doma because that's often what they're sold under in Norway. And Addy is very common to use, especially here in Europe because it is a German brand. I'm gonna say these are sort of intermediate price category. You could probably get a circular Addy needle for about five to seven pounds. So I'm gonna sort of call them mid-tier price range, but they are considered quite a high-end needle brand here in Europe because I don't know something about the way that they brand themselves. It sort of feels nice. Second, I'll be talking about Chayagu needles. These are definitely in the high-end group of the price the three price categories that I have made. They are more expensive and circular needles, while they may start at about seven pounds, could go up to something around 15 pounds per circular. So yes, this is on the higher end. Also, I have been given one of my many Chayagu interchangeable sets from a yarn shop that I believe stocked Chagu. So not quite the same as getting anything from Chagu, but I just felt like I had to mention that. But all the other sets of Chagus that I have combined, 
I have bought myself. Thirdly is Haya Haya, which I would also say is sort of mid-tier price range, a little bit more so than Adi. I reckon it's circular is about six to eight pounds. And I also have to mention that Haya Haya has sent me a sort of goodie bag just before I was about to make this review video. And I told them, well, that's great timing. I'm about to review knitting needles. So, you know, send me what you want to send me. And they have sent me a few things. So, if you think that bias is my opinion, now, now you know. But all of my higher higher needles that I had before that, which is a number of interchangeable sets, I have again bought with my own money. <laughs> Another sort of mid-tier price category knitting brand is Knit Pro. Now, Knit Pro is the same as Knitters Pride overseas. I have also taken a sort of close look at, at Knit Picks and Drops and Lycke and they all kind of seem like the same needles to me. They are compatible, they seem to be made in the same factory, they feel the same to work with, they seem to have the same cables. I consider all of these the same and I will be henceforth referring to them as Knit Pro. You could probably get a Knit Pro circular for about five to seven pounds, so I'm gonna again consider them sort of mid-tier price range here. I don't know why I keep doing that <laughs> every time, but I do. I have bought all of my Knit Pro interchangeable sets except two. I was given the Zing needles to review many, many years ago. And I was more recently given the knit and sip needle set to review and I will finally be doing so in this very video. Also another brand that I have listed in my like research spreadsheet is Panda and I had to scratch my head because like what is Panda? I totally forgot about this brand and that's because I bought them once over a decade ago because I got a lot of needles in one big bulk and if I split the cost of that whole set per circular it cost half a pound per circular, so they were very affordable. I don't know if they're still called Panda, they may be sold under different brands, but they are circular needles, steel needles with a steel core, and they have sort of a bent kink in the needles themselves. I will be talking more about them in a bit, but they are definitely the most affordable needles I'll be talking about today. And they may be new to some of you, so that is worth a mention. Then we have Pony and other sort of beginner-ish needles. Yes, I'm going to be calling them that because they are a lot of people's entry points into knitting needles. These tend to be sort of aluminium covered, sort of matte texture and plasticky cables and they can be quite tough to work with and I, <laughs> I'm going to try not to spoil what I think about them. But they are definitely in the more affordable of the three price categories that I made. I reckon you can get a pony circular for about three to four pounds and there are other sort of more affordable brands that are probably even less than that, but they are all quite similar. I was once given a circular needle by Pony. I don't really remember the context of that, but I do know that that is why I have one. And so I have to mention that. Finally is Prim, which I think is a very underestimated and maybe undiscovered knitting needle brand to many. Uh, it's quite common here in Europe. And I know a lot of people who sew are familiar with Prim because they make a lot of sewing equipment and stuff. And I reckon you can get a Prim circular for about four to six pounds, depending. So I consider them quite affordable as well. And yes, there was once where I was given a ton of circular needles from someone in Prim who knew someone who watched my podcast and therefore I somehow ended up with a lot of them, but I've never really been in direct contact with Prim. But that is a reason why I have quite many of them, but I was using them a lot before that point. So just worth mentioning again. Most of my Prim needles I have bought myself, but again, I wanna be transparent. Now that we've got that out of the way, I will be splitting the remainder of this video into three bulks where I'm gonna be covering interchangeable circulars, fixed circulars and short fixed circulars. And then finally, I'll be giving kind of my overall verdict. So starting out with interchangeable circular knitting needles, I wanna begin with talking about Knit Pro Nova because Knit Pro Nova were my very first set of interchangeable needles that I bought a decade ago thinking this will be the only interchangeable needle set that I will ever need <laughs> because you can just screw off the needles, leave the cable on, get a new cable and just, you know, keep having projects. First of all, the set doesn't really include all the needles you may need. So I have since bought a extra set for thicker needles that were not included in the main set. And I've also bought in between needle sizes because in Europe you really only get, you know, whole and half needle sizes. You don't get three, seven, five needles, for instance. The cable lengths that I have for pretty much all my Knit Pro interchangeables start from 40 centimeters to about 120. That's about 16 inches to I think about 48. Now, these sets cost a lot less, you know, a decade ago as, as things often do, and I reckon they're about 50 pounds these days. One thing that's worth pointing out about Knit Pro Nova needles is that they do not print the size of the needle on the needle unless 
you get the Knitter's Pride ones because I got my shorter needle tips from Knitter's Pride. So that was a separate Nova set that I added to my main one. And they have the needle size written on them clearly and it's stayed on and it looks like it's going to stay on indefinitely. Whereas the longer sets don't have that and it's confusing and I have to measure them all the time. And that is a little bit frustrating. But the needle tips themselves, I love them. I still love them. They are sharp, but not too blunt. The tip is consistent across needle sizes. I really like the material. It's slick. My stitches run smooth off the needles and I use them still. Another downside to these is that the case that they come in it's kind of terrible. I used it for as long as I could, but when I started to rack up some extra Chiago cases that, in my opinion, are probably the best cases, spoiler, <laughs> I have moved my Knit Pro interchangeables to those as well. Similar to the Knit Pro Nova needles are the Knit Pro Zing needles that I was given by Knit Pro to review. Now I only have these needles for working 60 to 120 centimeter circumference. And I will also add that these are pretty much identical to the more recent smart sticks, apart from how they look. Zings actually come to about 40 pounds per set. And I reckon that makes them the most affordable set of the bunch. And I do think Zing needles are good. They actually have labels of the sizes of the needles that stay on the needles and the case is so good that I still use it although it still smells like a new car to this day even though it's several years old. <laughs> I might say that the needles are a smidge more blunt than the Novas but they're pretty much the same. Much like the Novas I prefer these needles for garments and I got both of these sets on a fairly tight budget many years ago and they're still good to this day. Overall I think I would rate them probably three out of five stars. Now the reason why I will get to in the end when I talk about the other two sets of Knit Pro needles that I have, but I might nudge these up to three and a half star rating. I would certainly give a four out of five star rating for how secure they are. This is something a lot of people are concerned with when they first get interchangeable needles. Is the needle tip gonna come off the cable when I knit? And I rarely have this happen with Knit Pro needles, especially the Zings and the Novas. Now next up is the Symphony needles. These are the Birch needles. I happen to have Symphony Dreams, but they are pretty much the same as Symphony Woods, only that the Dreams are colored sort of solid, whereas the Regular Symphony ones have multicolored. These are also very similar to Licky Needles and also the Knit and Sip kit that I'm gonna be talking about in a bit. So kind of consider them all the same and I like them. I do not prefer wooden needles, but if I'm going to work with wooden needles, I'm pretty happy to have this set and I go back to it every now and then. I tend to prefer working with wooden needles if I'm working with plant materials for yarn. So cotton and linen and stuff like that. If I'm making shawls even, I quite like using wooden needles. Now I've actually made four price categories for interchangeable sets in particular and there are the cheapest ones will definitely be Zings and Novas, and the second cheaper, if you will, will be these wooden needles. You can get a set of Symphony needles for about £70, and I reckon you probably have to go up to 75 for the Knit and Sip needles. Overall, I will say that these are a good option if you like smooth and pointy wooden needles. I just happen not to use them unless it's a last resort and I'm out of other sizes because I prefer metal needles and that's just my preference but they are good. Now I want to focus specifically on this knit and sip set because I have opinions. <laughs> this needle set was given to me by Knit Pro and I was very excited to get it and I find that they are pretty much the same as Symphony Dreams and Woods but the special thing about this set is the coffee theme. It comes with these little cups and Okay, if, you, if you're into that, I guess that's cool. Um, I Okay. And also each pair of needle tips have a label of a different type of coffee. And that's kind of the selling point. It's a knit and sip set. It's a knitter's coffee needle set. And they have the needle size written on the kind of connector bit of the needle and the cable and the name of the coffee written on the wooden part of the needle. And this is the whole selling point of the set. And this is why I just can't honestly recommend this set because just like the needle size of the regular Symphony Woods needles rubs off after a few uses, so does the names of the coffees on these needles. And that's like the whole selling point. And I use these needles once to knit a little baby garment, a little sweater, and the name of the coffee was gone. And that's it. Not only was the name of the coffee gone, the name of the needle size itself was gone. 
which was written on the metal part of the needle. I am familiar with how the name of the needle size tends to rub off on the wooden needles by Knit Pro, disappointing as it is, but you'd think it would stay on when it's written on the metal part of it, but it didn't. And this is a big frustration I have with Knit Pro overall, because I know that they know how to make the needle size stay on the needle, because it's still staying on my short Nova needles, but it tends to rub off on pretty much everything else. And I'm like, just just make the size of the needle stay on the needles. So I don't have to get my needle gauge out. The case itself, I don't really have a lot of good things to say about. It's huge and clunky and it doesn't even feel very luxurious. I've seen fancy needle sets by Knit Pro in the past. The Symphony Rose set, I think it was, looked really nice. But then I look at this and the sort of velvet material, it's just glued on and it's not even glued on very well. And yes, you could take the velvet case where the needles are in out of the box. It's still quite big, but this velvet just attracts dust like nobody's business. So I don't know why you would leave it out. So what I will be doing finally, now that I've reviewed this set, is to take the needles out of the case and put it with all my other Knit Pro interchangeables. I guess the idea is nice, but if you just want wooden interchangeable Knit Pro sets, I would just get the regular Symphony Woods or Symphony Dream sets. And if you want it to look a little bit extra, you can get the Licky needles. I don't really get why this set, but it is mainly the case itself that gets me kind of why, uh, because the needles themselves are good and I would recommend the needles. We can get the same needles in pretty much any other wooden needle set by Knit Pro. So why am I giving all these four types of Knit Pro interchangeable needles three out of five stars? I do want to kind of nudge it up to three in a half. Maybe I could even give it a four out of five. The reason it's dropped to three instead of four out of five for me is that the quality of Knit Pro needles itself has gone down this past decade. It's a shame that this happened because I love Knit Pro needles, but I find that the ones that I like the most are the ones I bought first. Sure, some of them be worn out a little bit and sometimes things break and Knit Pro do offer replacements, which is great. But the more recent my Knit Pro needles have been purchased, the worse they tend to be. And the issue tends to be in the joint of the interchangeable needles. And this is actually also an issue with the fixed needles, which is why I pretty much never buy fixed Knit Pro needles. It snags and sometimes the cable just pops out of the joint that you screw on to the needle. And that's why I can't really give it a, a full recommendation when it comes to does the needle stay attached to the cable? Because yes, it doesn't come unscrewed, but the cable can simply pop out. And this has happened multiple times for me. So yes, Knit Pro will replace it for you. So if you keep your receipts, you know, and this is the more affordable option of the ones that I have used the past decade, then you know, they're great. But that is the reason I can't give them a full rating and they will eventually just get three out of five stars for me. But I really, I, I like all my interchangeable sets. I don't have an interchangeable set that I don't like. Why would I have that? So I'm kind of just trying to use the full star rating range and we'll definitely see that in the next brand of needles I'll be talking about. And that is higher, higher needles. Now I have a number of higher, higher interchangeable sets because I do get both the long and short needle tips just like I do with Knit Pro because then I can work both long and short circumferences. So that is from 40 centimeters to 120 centimeters. So about 16 inches to I think 48 inches. And I'm gonna say the price range here is about the same as wooden Knit Pro needles. So the sort of mid tier price range. You could typically get a higher, higher needle set for about 60 pounds. Though I will say the sets do differ in size and sort of what they contain, but the sort of sizes that I've got, which is sort of the bare minimum ones, they tend to be about 60. Now, despite having multiple sets of interchangeables, they generally fall into two groups and that is sharps and steels. So yes, they're both made of steels, but the steel ones are not as sharp as the sharp ones, but they are still quite sharp. They're not blunt by any means, but they aren't super, super pointy like the sharp ones are. Between the two, I definitely prefer steels. I tend to injure myself on the sharp ones because I always push on the needle because again, I knit tight and it's kind of part of it. But I know a lot of people swear by the sharp needles. I just kind of feel like it's worth pointing out that they aren't universally loved. It will depend on whether you are someone who likes, you know, needles the sharper the better. But if you don't, then they're the steel ones are plenty sharp. I would also like to point out that they do have the sizes of the needles printed on the needles and it does not rub off. I do have some higher, higher needles where it's quite faint. It doesn't seem to be to do with how much I've used them. It's just faded, a bit hard to read, but yes, the size does stay on. I also find them the most secure interchangeable needles of the ones that I have 
because they have this swivel cord. So even if your grip is sort of biased against how the needles are, the direction that they're screwed onto the cable, the cable itself inside the joint rotates so that it doesn't come unwound against when you kind of rotate your grip around the needle against the cable that's holding your knitting, so to speak. And so because of this, the needles just don't come undone pretty much ever. I'm actually quite sloppy when I attach my higher, higher needles to the cable because they just don't tend to want to unscrew. Whereas most of my other sets, I have to put in a security key so that I can tighten it as much as possible. Higher, higher, I can be a bit sloppy and still get away with it. If I'm gonna say anything negative about higher, higher interchangeable needles is that there is a slight snag at the joint, sadly. Just where the cable rotates, there can be a snag, but it's only the case with some of my cables, not all of them. So I may have just been unlucky with them, but it is worth mentioning. Now, just like with Knit Pro needles, I tend to prefer these for garments, but honestly, I would use them for pretty much anything. But interchangeable needles for me are primarily for garment knitting. But honestly, they're also really great for shawls. The short circumference is good for hats. I even use them for knitting sleeves in short circumference. Like, they're great for everything. The only thing I don't use interchangeable needles for, no matter what the brand is, is Magic Loop, because the chances of untwisting the needle from the cable is just kind of the same across the, the board. I prefer fixed needles for that, which we'll get to in my fixed needle review. If I have all my needles at disposal, including Chagi, which I'll be talking about next, I tend to opt for higher, higher steel tips. Not the sharp ones, but the steel ones. They're lovely, they're also really light. They're as light as paper, pretty much. They're just really, really lovely. Honestly, if you're only going to get one set of interchangeable needles, I would get these. Whether you prefer steels or sharps, I would just, this is my favorite interchangeable needles. I'm gonna give higher, higher needles a five out of five star rating, both the steel and sharp needles, because they're great. I probably would dock half a star of the sharp needles personally, just because I don't tend to prefer sharp needles. The final interchangeable needles I will be talking about now is Chayagu. I have a number of Chayagu interchangeable sets and I have both the long tips and the shorter tips so that I can work shorter conference. So I have the range from 40 centimeter to 120 again, 16 inches to 48. But I will say Chayagu does fall into the higher of the four price categories that I have made for interchangeable needles. You probably have to fork out a total hundred pounds for a set of Chayagu needles. Hence why I was very happy when I could get them for reduced price from someone who was selling theirs. In terms of whether the needles are securely attached to the cables, I'm gonna have to dock one star off Chagu for that and give the security rating a four out of five stars. They do tend to come unscrewed so you get a slight snag. That can be quite easily done because of the steel core cable that is quite unyielding compared to the rotating higher, higher cord. However, the needle does not come off, so you do not need to worry if this happened. It will simply snag on your knitting and you will notice that, believe me, and you can quickly just shuffle your stitches back and fix it there and then. It will not lead to disaster. You will know and you can fix it, but it is a little bit annoying. And so I suggest, you know, plugging in that key that you get with the needles to secure them properly when you attach the needle tip to your cable. In terms of putting labels of the size of the needle on the needles, just like Haya Haya, Chagu is great at this. The size of the needle stays on the needle, it doesn't rub off, so, so that's great. In terms of the case that the needles come with, this is by far my favorite because I use my Chagu cases. I have three because of the first set that I bought, the second set that I bought secondhand, and the third set that I got for my shorter tips. I put all my needles in them, so I have one for Knit Pro, one for Chagu, and one for Hayas. Haya. It's just really practical because it comes with a zipper around, which I do like the Hayas Haya cases, which I now use for crochet hooks. They don't really fit, but they will do. But those needles tend to slide out of that case. There's no zipper around, so it's just very easy to get a bit of a needle tip disaster when you open the case. Whereas with Chagu, the stay put, the pockets are labeled. Granted, I do miss some pockets there because of US versus European sizes, but I think they are the best cases across the board. The best feature for me with Chagu needles is the material itself. The smooth pointy tips are just right. They are probably more comparable to higher, higher steel than sharps, but they might sit somewhere in between because they can be a little bit too pointy for me sometimes. I definitely prefer using Chagu interchangeables for garments. And my conclusion when it comes to interchangeable Chagus is that this is quality needles. These are probably, I've heard people joke it's the Rolls Royce 
Rolls Royce, Rolls Royce of knitting needles. I don't know cars, but they feel very exclusive and fancy and all that stuff. But I will say, compared to Haya Haya, I I gave them four out of five stars. Whereas Haya Haya is the only one that I gave a five out of five star rating. So the winner of interchangeable needles is Haya Haya steals for me. Sharps for someone else maybe. But cherry goose are very very neck and neck, and I use them as often, if not more often, than Haya Haya's. But I will give a massive shout out to Knit Pro, Zing and Nova that I use quite a bit as well. I don't really have a lot of bad things to say about any of these interchangeable sets. And that concludes the interchangeable circular needle set review part of this video. We're now gonna move on to fixed circular needles before we wrap up with short fixed interchangeable needles. So these fixed needles will be starting at 40 centimeters going all the way up to 100 something. So from 16 inches to about 40 to 48 inches. First, we're going to be talking about Addy needles because Addy were some of my first fixed circular needles. I had a bit of a hard time understanding all the types of needles that Adi offers. I had a good look through the website and I looked through the needles that I have in my collection and try to compare and understand what it was that I had. I have moved some needles around different cases. So I've generally narrowed it down to three groups. One is the gold cord ones, sort of a non-transparent plastic cord. Then you have the lace needles, they're quite pointy. And then you have the lace gold tip. So these are similar to lace, but they are in a sort of golden material and they tend to have these more see-through red cables attached, at least mine do. In terms of my four price category for fixed circular needles, I would say these are probably in the second cheapest group. Like I said, you can probably get a circular for about five to seven pounds. Now, one question I will be asking for all these fixed needles is, will I use them for magic loop knitting? Because I do not use my interchangeable needles for magic loop. Like I said, they tend to come untwisted when I do that. The tip tends to come off. So I use my fixed needles mostly for this purpose, but do I use all of them? Not really Addy needles, I will say. I would maybe use the gold cord ones because that cord doesn't tend to kink up, but my goodness does that red transparent cord on the other needles do. Whereas the whether it's the lace tip or the lace gold tip, that cord is my nemesis. I hate it. It's it's awful. I was so excited about it when I first got these needles and how bendy that cord was, but when you use it for magic loop, it kinks up and you probably have to boil in water to make it relax. The best thing I can say for the gold cord ones is that they have a pretty good cable. Maybe not great for Magic Loop, but it's a pretty good cable. The worst feature of them is that the pointiness of the needle tip varies across sizes. If you get a big size, the tip can be quite blunt, but if you get a small size, the tip is very sharp. And so that's just very inconsistent. And I don't like that. Just make up your mind. Do like Haya Haya does. Come on. Come on, Addy, you're a fancy brand. So for that reason, it ends up being a bit of a last resort knitting needle for me. Whereas when it comes to the lace Addy needles, the tips are really good. These are probably my favorite tips of theirs. Combining that tip with the regular gold cable are pretty okay needles, to be fair. These tips are pointy across sizes, so that's good. But the cable is just such a nightmare. It's no good for Magic Loop. I, 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 I don't like it. But I do sometimes return to these needles for one purpose and one purpose only, and that is the 16 inch circulars. The fixed 16 inch circulars are actually still pretty good and they're great for hats and sleeves and stuff like that. But when it comes to the golden lace tips with the red cable, I have nothing nice to say. The thing is, the tips start to smell funny. They make my hands smell. There's something in the material that's like, it's, it's not it, it's not good. I don't like to use them for anything. And honestly, I, I don't even know, they're tucked away somewhere in a cupboard. I had, to, I had to fish them up for this review specifically. Overall, I know a lot of people love Addy Circular Needles, but I personally have stopped buying them. I didn't talk about the interchangeable Addy tips because I've never used them, so I don't know anything about that. But when it comes to fixed Addies, I've given up on them. The only time you'll find me buying them is if I'm somewhere in the middle of nowhere, Norway, where that's my only option. But I do quite like the 16 inch Addy needles. They're not too bad. I will probably prefer some of the other brands we're going to be talking about, but yeah, no, Addy, not a favorite. So my rating for the gold cord Addies that I have is 
two out of five stars. Good cable, but inconsistent tip. The lace ones, I would give three out of five stars because the tip is great. The cable is no good for Magic Loop, but actually those needles are really good for short circumference knitting, like the 16 inch needles. But the lace gold tip one with the red coily cable will get one star and I would give it zero if I could. I hate them, they're the worst. The cable's terrible, the needle tips smell funky. No, mm -mm, not for me. I did love them once and now I just, no, they're dead to me. Moving on. <laughs> We are now going to be talking about another well-known needle, at least back in Norway, and that is prim needles. Now, prim you can generally group into two types of needles, is the matte and the glossy ones. So the matte ones I will call the aluminium needles, and the glossy ones are silver, I think they're called. They're sort of nickel plated, they're quite shiny. I have cable circumferences for these from, again, 16 inches to, I don't even know what this is in inch, inches. It is 40 centimeters to 160 centimeters. And I feel very differently about these two materials. Price-wise, these are in the lowest of the four brackets that I made. I would say you can get a circular for probably four to six pounds. In terms of Magic Loop, I used them more for Magic Loop back in the day. I probably consider them just as good as the gold cord ones by Addis for this. They both have the same issue that there's a slight snag at the joint of the cable and the needle. Not a lot. I didn't even remember mentioning it for the Addy needles, but it's there. So for the silver prim needles, I like the cable. The needles are really slick. There is some joint snag. They're very good for garments and shawls. Whereas for the aluminium needles, yes, the cable is the same. So obviously I like that. But the matte finish and the joint snag is a pain. It's, it's awful. I get so mad if I can only find matte prim needles, I will refuse to buy them unless there are other options. I just can't deal with that matte finish at all. The matte prim needles I had, I've pretty much got rid of, except for the shorter circumference ones where I really just didn't have any other choice. I don't really use those needles for anything. So when it comes to would I recommend them? Yeah, I would recommend the silver ones, the glossy ones. So when you make an order, just be sure that those are the ones you're getting because that can be harder to see online. So the silver prim needles get a four out of five star rating for me. The only reason they don't get a full five is because of that slight snag at the cable. Whereas the aluminium prim ones get two out of five stars. The cables are nice, but nah. And now we're going to be looking at fixed knit pro needles. I don't have a lot of fixed knit pro needles and we will be getting to why. Now, I love the interchangeable knit pro needles. You just heard me talk about them at length. But the fixed ones, I would consider these sort of mid-tier price range, same as Addy. Again, you could get circular for about five to seven pounds. And they're kind of okay for Magic Loop. Again, issues with the cables that don't make them ideal, but does the job. The only fixed knit pro needles I have are Novas and Zings and they are different. I find the Nova needles to be slightly sharper than the Zing needles but they're both good needle tips. I like the blunt Zing tips so I don't consider any of those worse or better, it's just worth noting. So why don't I like fixed knit pro? The joint snag. I don't know why the joint snag of fixed knit pro is so much worse than interchangeable knit pro. Maybe they just paid more attention to the joint for interchangeable needles because that is something people are a lot more concerned with with interchangeables. Like we don't want the place where needles and cables are attached to, to snags. So maybe they also pay attention to with the cable and that attachment snags. I, I don't know, but the fixed ones are horrible. I don't know what it is, why they... I, I, every now and then I have to buy a fixed uh, knit pro circular because that's the only option around. It's, they're quite common here in the UK. Like John Lewis will do them and stuff. But there's just too much yarn snag. Like this, the yarn will snag at the joint uh, way more than say Prim or Addy will do. And it's just not a pleasant experience. And I did, I, for that reason, just never reach for the few fixed knit pro needles that I have. So they both, Zing and Nova fixed needles get two out of five stars for me. That is quite different from how I feel about the interchangeable Zings and Novas, which I love. So they should be the same. They should, I don't. Anyway, moving on to higher higher fixed steels and sharps. Again, the range I have here is from about 40 to 80 centimeters circumference. So that's about 16 to 32 inches. Hey, I did that mad. And in terms of price category, I would say the mid-tier, but in the higher end, there's sort of mid-tier and a half. So you can get a circular for about six to eight pounds each. And I, I wouldn't use them for magic loop personally. I wouldn't risk it knowing what happened to the very similar looking red cable from Addy. They may behave better but mm, I just wouldn't risk it personally. I learned my lesson with Addy so I prefer to keep these needles for 
shawls and garments. To me, the steel tips of High High are the perfect needle tips, whereas the sharp ones are a little bit too pointy for me, but they're great if you love that. For me, those tips are too sharp and that I am worried about the cable coiling, so that does limit the use of these needles for me. And that is why they only get a four out of five star rating only. I mean, that's still pretty good. And I will give the same rating to the steel needles as well. However, because the steel needles have a tip that I can work more with, I actually use those more for shorter circumference. So 16 inch needles are great for working sleeves and stuff like that. So I tend to reach for fixed high highs for that purpose sometimes. So why don't I have a lot of interchangeable higher higher needles? Well, I don't see a huge advantage to getting fixed higher highs over having the interchangeable set. If you have interchangeable higher highs, you, you're good because they do the same thing. They're very similar. They're not like this weird knit pro situation where one is great and the other is just somehow not. So I'm good with interchangeable needles. I don't really need fixed higher highs. Now I want to talk about chayagu, fixed chayagus. I will be focusing on the red lace ones. They're quite pointy, they're made of metal and they have the red steel cord. The circumferences I have range from about 40 centimeters to 100 centimeters. I think that's 16 to 40 <laughs> inches. And these are definitely in the highest of the four price categories that I have. You probably have to fork out seven to 15 pounds for these needles. But the reason I love these fixed needles is because these are the best needles for magic loop knitting that I know of. Because of the cord, it's just, the stitches go smoothly from needles to cable and back from cable to needle, which is usually the biggest hurdle when working magic loop. Going from cable to needle all the time, the way we're sort of fiddling things around, isn't always great. So these needles really help this become as smooth of a journey as possible. The needle tips are close to perfect. They are second just right after the higher, higher steel ones. There is no snag on these needles whatsoever, which is the beauty of them and why I love them for Magic Loop. I don't really have anything negative to say about them at all. In fact, right before I recorded this, I would have said that these are unbreakable. They are durable. They will last a long time, but I have managed to break one set of circulars. I don't know how I did it. I was just pulling a lot of stitches over my needles and the cable did pop out on the needle and that should be impossible, but it has happened. So all of these needles are prone to breaking, but Chag is probably the least because it's only happened once. I honestly love using these needles for everything, but obviously they are quite cost prohibitive. So I tend to stick to the interchangeable ones because at least there I can use them on multiple projects, but I will definitely opt for these needles when it comes to working Magic Loop. And so for that reason, Fixed Chargo Needles gets a roaring five out of five star rating for me. I love them. I think they're great. They are, I, I've got nothing bad to say. However, pony needles. We're finally gonna talk about pony needles. I'm calling them pony needles. They are the most common type of sort of aluminum needles on the market, but there are other brands that are similar. They have this like gray coating, same as the prim aluminum needles, and they have an awful cord, which makes them worse than the prim aluminum needles. I put these in the most affordable of the four price categories that I came up with. I reckon again, three to four pounds ish per circular, if not less for maybe less known brands that do the same type of needles, but I would not use them for magic loop. I just would not. The snag, the, the materials, they would not be working with you if you first tried magic loop on needles like this. Chances are, even if you could like magic loop, you probably wouldn't with these needles. Now, I know some people who swear by needles like these. They used to be the default type needles back when my mom was a knitter my age and my aunt swears by these types of needles and will try her best to get hold of needles like these. Anyone in Norway remembers these, the Novi needles. Novi, I guess. Yeah, so. I personally find that when I am talking to new knitters and teaching people to knit, starting out with those needles tend to discourage them very quickly. And so when I let them borrow, say, my Chagu fixed needles, you get a whole different tune and they carry on and feel a lot more empowered. So while some people love them, I just, I feel bad that these are the first needles a lot of people start out with because it tends to make people feel like they are bad when they're really could be working with materials that are a little bit more beginner friendly. So yeah, what's the best feature of these needles? Nothing, I don't like them. The worst feature is definitely the needle material, the cable snag and the fact that the cable itself is so rigid and just awful to work with. I don't use them on anything and would I recommend them? No, 
run the other way. <laughs> Final brand we're gonna be talking about is Panda or whatever other brand these needles are sold under. This is a lesser known brand that's sold in bulk on sites like eBay, etc. And they're made of stainless steel and they have this steel cord that is suspiciously similar to the cord of Chaya Goose. The only needles I have of theirs are 80 centimeters long, so that is 32 inches. And they are definitely the most affordable needles that I'm talking about. I would say, Consider them a pound each. They averaged almost to half a pound for me when I bought the whole set 10 years ago. If you can find them on like an eBay auction or something, you can get them really, really affordable. The only downside to these is the kink on the needles. So I would personally not use them on for Magic Loop for that reason. The cable to needle joint itself is quite smooth, so it would work well for that reason. The only way I would say that they are different from Chagus is that the tips are slightly blunter, but if you hold them side by side, you'll notice they are really similar. Like, I bought these almost a decade before I even knew about Chagu needles, and maybe these were like the trying out kind of factory outlet needles for Chagu made in the same place. I, re I really would think so, because if you compare the Chagu needles that I have that, that do have kinks at the beginning of the needle tips, they really start looking very similar. They feel very similar and the prices are so far apart. Remember Chagu was in the highest of the four price categories that I made, whereas these are in the lowest. In fact, they fall below the lowest. So if you really wanted to try Chagus and they're not in your price range, keep an eye out for these on eBay because you can get really good value for your money. We are getting to the final third part of this review video and that is short circular needles. Now I'm gonna say up front that I have actually stopped using short circulars. I now just force my <laughs> stitches onto 16 inch circulars or I will opt for magic loop. But there was a time when I liked short circulars. I tried a lot of different brands and I did arrive at a favorite. So I will be sharing my experiences. I'll be starting at the shortest circumference and going up to the longest circumference. We're starting at 20 centimeter circulars up to 32. That is eight inches. I actually wrote this down <laughs> this time to 12.5 inches. We're gonna start off with Addy. These are 20 centimeters long. Now, I think this was Addy's take on nine inch needles, but for some reason it ended up being 20 centimeters where your usual nine inch is about 23. I guess maybe, maybe this is a European problem, a metric problem, but it ends up being the worst short circulars I have ever used. I don't even know if they make them anymore. So I don't actually have the shortest Addy needles here to show you. I got so angry with them that I'm pretty sure I binned them. I just, I, I was fuming, I hated them. The reason why is because the needle tips are so short, there's nothing to hold on to. And so that is why the Addy 20 centimeter short circulars get a one star rating for me. Second, we're gonna talk about Chiago nine inch needles. So nine inches or 23 centimeters around. Now, while well, Adi sort of falls into the second cheapest of my four price categories, Chiago is, like I said earlier, falls into the most expensive one of the four. We're talking eight to 10 pounds, whereas you could get an Adi for six to eight. But these are perfect. Why Why does this have to be the case that prices correlate with these things? Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. And here it does, and I, I get it. Because the firm cable that Chagu needles have kind of extends the needle tip length. Now the tips are already longer than the Addy ones, but adding that steel cable on just gives structure to the whole thing and you feel like you're just holding onto this securely and it doesn't feel like you're just like, kind of, oh, it's, it's just, if I have to use nine inch needles, which I try to avoid these days, but if I have to, I will go back to these, for sure. I bought them in pretty much every size that I needed at the time, and they are definitely my favorite. Thirdly, we're gonna talk about Haya Haya nine inch needles, and I don't love these as much. Haya Haya falls into the sort of same price category as Addy, with about seven to eight pounds per circular. I do think these needles are good, but they are just a little bit too short. The needles just are a bit shorter than Chargu, so I tend to opt for Chargu's. Plus the plastic core doesn't have the same kind of oomph to it that the Chagus do, so that's another downside. And that's why my short higher higher needles only get a three out of five stars. Not terrible, not great, Just they just are. Fourth, we're gonna get back to Addy. And this is Addy 25 centimeters or 10 inches. So I think this was when Addy maybe decided to rework the needles a little bit and it is an improvement. They are a little bit more expensive. So where the shorter ones were sort of six to eight, pounds. These are more seven to nine maybe. I honestly find that the longer needle they added here is actually a little bit too long and it makes it hard to join in the round and so it may not get the one star rating that the shorter Addis did but they get two. 
it, it did not work. Fifth, we're gonna be talking about Knit Pro again. Now my short Knit Pro needles are all Nova, so just note that. These are like the previous Addy ones, 25 centimeters around, that is 10 inches but they are a bit more affordable. I would probably place them somewhere between the lowest to the second lowest price tier I made. They're about five to seven pounds each. And I think these are good. There's a much better needle to cable ratio than the Addy ones. And the joint is surprisingly smooth for Knit Pro. They got this one right. Maybe I've just been unlucky with my longer fixed Knit Pro needles, but these joints for the shorter ones is actually pretty good. Same needles, shorter circumference for some reason, that helped. So I'm actually going to give these fixed Knit Pro needles four out of five stars. I really like them. And if my Charagoose short circulars are all busy, I will be using my short Knit Pro needles. We're gonna be returning to Aji again. And you think I'm gonna keep roasting Aji, but I will not. These are called 30 centimeter circulars, but they do measure to 29. You're not fooling me, Aji. And they fall into the same price category as the very shorter Aji ones, so about six to eight pounds. But these are smooth and lovely. The needles could be longer, like the Charagoose ones for sure, but apart from from that, these are pretty good. I would compare them to the Knit Pro needles I just talked about, and I would give them the same rating, four out of five stars. So when Addy shows up, Addy shows up, I actually, when looking at the Addy needles I have and the ones that are in use, they are the shorter circular ones. So they will be these, the 30 centimeter ones and the 40 centimeter ones. So about 12 inches and 16 inches circumference is actually where I think Addy's strength lies. Sure, I still prefer Chargui, but these are pretty close. Second to last, we're gonna talk about higher, higher short circulars. These are actually 30 centimeters around, so they measure 12 inches, and they fall into the second most affordable price category as well. They're about seven to eight pounds, and I do like them. However, I don't make these needles without that kink at the cable needle joint, and I don't like that kink, but I guess it does add for longer needle length while not impeding on being able to join in the round with the circular. So I will, I can see why they did that, but I just don't like it personally. So I tend not to use these needles a lot, but I don't have a lot of bad things to say about them either. So they're gonna get three out of five stars for me. So same rating as the even shorter, higher, higher ones. High high for me are the strongest when they're interchangeable and long, the short ones, not for me. At last, we're gonna talk about prim short circulars. Now, these are supposed to be 30 centimeters around, but they do measure 32 centimeters around. So they don't feel as short as the short higher higher ones, and they don't have that kink at the needle. So I prefer them for that reason, but that is probably why they're a bit longer as well. These are definitely the most affordable of these needles. I put them in the lowest of the four price categories. They retail to about four to six pounds. And I really like the needle to cable ratio. I find them comfortable to work with. I have made many, many sleeves with these needles, but I hate the needle material. The aluminum cover is the only one you can get with these. For some reason, they don't make them with the silver glossy cover. Had they done that, I would have adored them, but they don't do that. And so they will only get three out of five stars for me. I have to be true to, you know, how much I have actually used them, but I do not use them anymore, so eh. And so that's my needle review and the sun is setting and I really should wrap this up. But I thought I'd give some final concluding remarks. First of all is what's the worst needle here? And clearly the loser of this review is Addy, which is a shame because I think Addy is a good brand. I just haven't had a lot of good experiences. I've told you why, but I'm open to, you know, that there may be Addy needles that I should try. I think the combination of the gold cord and the sil silver lace tips might be it, but I'm already happy with the needles I have, so I probably won't be searching for that. So yeah, Addy uh, Lass is the biggest loser in this review. <laughs> I guess ponies really, but I mean, dunking on ponies seems a bit cheap. <laughs> the best needles for Magic Loop, a drum roll fixed Chiagu red lace. By far, there is really no contender. They, they are the best for Magic Loop. They're gonna be the smoothest experience. I would have mentioned the Panda needles if they hadn't had that kink at the needle cable joint. Chargu fixed red lace, best magic loop needles in, in my opinion. The best needles for garments, there's actually quite a few needles and I would mention pretty much all of my interchangeable needles for this. Number one is definitely interchangeable higher, higher steels. 
they are my go-to for most things not magic loop. I also love using fixed chargus for garments and my interchangeable knit pro needles are all wonderful for garments, though I tend to default to zings and novas because I'm a metal girl. And the winner of the best short circumference needle is definitely nine inch Chiyogu circulars. And yes, it's a bit of a bummer when you find out that the best needles for certain things are also the most expensive ones, but there's nothing wrong with the ones that I thought was sort of neck and neck with Chiyogus, but just I couldn't rate them quite as highly. I still think they're great and I use them a lot as well. So I hope this was useful for you, even, even if we disagree on some things. This is my kind of 10 year experience with the knitting needles that I mentioned so far. I might try new ones in the future, but I'm very happy that I have landed on these needles that I have mentioned at the very end. So yeah, I hope, I hope you liked this video. I hope it covered all of your knitting needle curiosities and I will see you next time. Bye.